So when using the Laplace transforms to solve differential equations, the final step in finding our solution is involves uh, inverse transform. And the form of the transform version of the solution often looks something like this, where we have a constant divided by a linear expression, like 2 divided by s minus 3. So when you have uh, a case like that, um, we're ultimately going to start just recognizing these and looking them up on a table, but I'm just going to go through uh, a sort of quick way of seeing how the inverse can be found. So um, first of all, we know that the Laplace transform is linear, and so is, although I haven't shown it, uh, so is the inverse transform. And what that means is that we can factor out that 2 inside and rewrite the problem as 2 times the inverse transform of 1 over s minus 3. Now whenever we have something of this form, the inverse transform is actually kind of easy to write down. And let me just show you why. If you take the transform of e to the at, that is exactly the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times e to the at dt, where a is just some constant. So now, finding the antiderivative of this guy, we can combine those two exponentials and we get a minus s times t dt. And the antiderivative of that is going to be 1 over a minus s e to the a minus s times t evaluated from 0 to infinity. And remember that these upper and lower limits are replacing the t variable. So uh, first we have a constraint on a, or rather on s, uh, depending on what a is. We have to have that uh, this coefficient here, in order for the upper limit to converge, we need this to be a negative number. So for that to be a negative number, we have to have s greater than a. And so we can now, under that, that constraint, we can now write down that the upper limit goes to 0 and the lower limit will be minus 1 over a minus s multiplied by e to the 0, which is just 1. So I can rewrite this as 1 over s minus a. So now you can see that the Laplace transform of e to the at is always 1 over s minus a. Well, we have a case here where we're looking for the inverse transform of something of exactly this form, where a is just 3. So we can write down immediately that this is e to the 3t, and that 2 is still out in front. So we get 2e to the 3t is the inverse transform. 